Hey everybody, welcome to the weekly Magic News Update for November 5th, 2017 on the Mana League. I'm John, as always, and this week was a little bit of a slow week, plus there's no story time for the next month or so until the unstable story comes out, so we're in for a little bit of a shortish one here. Up first, from the Vault Transform, had a few cards inadvertently revealed. The three front-facing cards from the set were revealed to be Liliana, Heretical Healer, her Origins Edition, Delver of Secrets, and Huntmaster of the Fells, with both the Huntmaster and Delver having new art. The rest of the set will be revealed tomorrow, and I'm very apt to pick this set up. My cube runs a number of Transform cards, since it does have a slightly more modern slant to it, and I really enjoy alternate art. From the Vault Transform comes out on November 24th. Up next, there were a couple of publicized disqualifications at the Pro Tour this year that's still happening, actually, as I record. Uh, in round six, Huang Hao Shan was disqualified for intentional misrepresentation of the game state. Huang took to social media to explain his side and confusion about the DQ. For his side, he claimed the issue came down to how his energy reserve was displayed on the dice and whether 7 was represented by a 4 and a 3 or a 5 and a 2. However, with the official statement that came out a little bit later, it turns out the issue was simply to do with him not reducing his energy total after using Long Tusk Cub a couple of times while he was in a disadvantaged board position, which is the key thing. While there was some outcry over this DQ, it's really how things have to work especially at the Pro Tour level, remembering something like life loss or energy usage throughout the game and then suddenly forgetting it, exactly where forgetting it would matter the most, is a massively abusable act. Whether Huang actually intentionally cheated here or whether it was a mistake, it has to be a DQ. Many commentators argue that this should be a game loss or a match loss, but here's the reason that it can't be. If we change the penalty to a game loss, then the player who is in a losing position can either just continue and lose, they can quote-unquote forget something, get caught, and lose, because they get the match loss, or not get caught and win. In that scenario, which is what commentators are asking for, you literally should always cheat. Because you're losing if you get caught, you're losing if you do nothing, but if you get away with it, you win. And so the correct answer is to cheat. We cannot have the game of magic have the correct answer to be always cheat. And so DQ from the entire tournament must be the penalty for something like this that is open for abuse. Will some players make actual legitimate mistakes and end up with a DQ? Yes. But it is such an easily abusable thing and such an insanely difficult thing to tease out whether it was legitimate or not, it has to be a DQ. Moral of the story, don't play sloppy, don't rush things, and you'll be perfectly fine. The second DQ from the Pro Tour that was publicized is a little bit more interesting. In round 15, Yao Zile was playing against LSV, and they were on the final turn of extra time in game 3, meaning the game was going to be a draw if nobody won or conceded. LSV revealed his hand and said, eh, I'm pretty sure I was going to win. Now, as an aside, I have a huge problem with this, as it's meaningless to me. If you were going to win, you would have won, but you didn't. Here you are sitting at the cusp of getting a draw. If you would have won, you, you would have already won. I don't care what's in your hand. But that's how pro players work, and that's how the pro players in-group works, with concessions being requested, if not expected, by many players in a variety of scenarios. And that's a problem that I'll get into a little bit later. Yao said he wasn't so sure, revealed his hand, flipped a couple cards off the top of his library, pointed to Anissa and said, you know, I probably would have killed you. Now, neither player was willing to concede, so the match slip was signed as a draw. A short while later, Yao was DQ'd, with the reasoning being improper method to determine the outcome of the match, in that he flipped cards from his deck while still in a game of magic in an attempt to decide the result of the match. This is technically correct. As written, it had to be a DQ. You can't use information like what's on top of your deck to determine if the match should be a win or a loss or a draw. Now, while it didn't have an impact because it did just end up in a draw, they chose to draw the game, there was the attempt to discuss an outcome based on something that you can't do. You can't flip cards over in the middle of the game. You can reveal your hand, however. So this had to be a DQ. But this whole situation brings up my huge problem that I have with this whole culture of expectations of concessions from pro players. This game went to time, it went to turn five, 
and there were no winners. That is a drawn game of magic. I think either player discussing who should concede is a blight on the pro scene. I think LSV being the first to flip his hand down and saying, I think I would have won, is a really conceited, entitled attitude. As I said, I don't care that you would have won. You didn't. You drew the game. Now, Yao flipping cards off the top and saying, no, I think I would have won, I think is also a problem because clearly he was fishing for the concession from LSV. And so I think there was a huge problem here with the fact that there's just this built-in culture of draws shouldn't happen, somebody should concede to me. And I think a big problem is it's often very big name pros who seem to feel most entitled to these concessions. Now, unfortunately, no clean, easy solution has ever been come up with as to how to stop this from happening. And until that can be figured out, this is going to continue to happen unless the pro player in-group changes their attitudes and they are so ingrained and so established as the in-group that they just won't. So how do you avoid getting a DQ like this? Well, make sure that you know exactly how to discuss who wins and who loses in a draw or take steps to be the change to competitive magic by not creating a culture of expected concessions. That would be my personal preference. Anyways, enough about the Pro Tour. The final story today is two cards were revealed for Rivals of Ixalan. As it was already previously mentioned, Game Day, now called Store Championship, has moved to the end of a set's release, and the participation promo is a rare from the next set, in this case Rivals of Ixalan. The Store Championship promo this time around is Gulta Primal Hunger, a 10 green green legendary creature Elder Dinosaur, which is a 12-12, has Trample, of course, and costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. This thing looks very fun, obviously has commander players salivating, and even standard players are thinking about just how early this can come down. I think the earliest I've seen is something like turn 4. Very fun dino, and you get it just for showing up to the store championship, which is on December 30th or 31st. Check your local game store for their exact date. The second reveal was the promo that all attendants will receive by going to the Rivals of Ixalan Open House, an event that's designed to get new players into the game. It's designed to teach new players how to learn. So if you're an experienced player, I encourage you to go to these open houses to help new players get into the game. Various local game stores run them in various ways, so do check your local store for their exact plans. But this open house's promo is a reprint, a reprint that has been asked for from Lorwyn, Silvergill Adept. Silvergill Adept is one in a blue for a 2-1 Merfolk Wizard, but you do have to pay an additional 3 mana to cast it. Unless you reveal a Merfolk from your hand. Not that big of a deal for your average Merfolk deck. When it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. 2-1 for almost always 2, draw a card, is a pretty good deal. This is played in many modern Merfolk decks, and it'll likely help standard Merfolk be a thing once Rivals is released. The Rivals of Ixalan open house will be on January 6th or 7th, depending on your LGS's schedule. So as I said, unfortunately, there's no story time this week. I believe Wizards did release the Planeswalker's Guide to Ixalan, but I don't think it really gave us any more lore or anything like that. So story time will be off for a few weeks until whenever that unstable story comes out. I'm not sure uh, exactly what day that's going to be, probably sometime around the unstable release. But let me know what you think about the revealed Rivals of Ixalan cards. Let me know what you think about those DQs and concessions and expected or entitled concessions in the pro scene. And uh, of course, from the Vault Transform. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash Mana Leak, Twitch.tv slash Mana Leak, and Patreon.com slash Mana Leak. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise... See you all next time.